Happy birthday. Thank you for saying happy birthday, Danny Wall. Everyone can see y'all. You're not on yet. Yeah, once uh, the music stops, I'll, I'll let y'all speak. Dahlia. <laughs> Salam. Jonas. Melee, melee. Men, I say I'm Chalkun. Yahuate. Thank you, young, uh, Yamane Hagos. Thank you, Carter. Next, next. Thank you. Mm. Go ahead, Jonas. Man, we grew to 50 already. Let's go. Share, share, share. Let's go. Melee, melee. Long life, so go out. Thank you, Heno. I finally got my cousin Dahlia on life. <laughs> so hard that is. <laughs> Gia 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 Hide behind the sea. Is your music, Mr. Wade? Zababa, thank you, thank you. Share more water lake. What am I Associated is going to be a hot topic. Melee, 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 melee. Me do go home, I do move on to go to my haru. Eti am hek dev zombies, I'm a haru and the low can a balash you hope. Thank you, HTHT. HT. Melee, melee. Share, share, let's go. Melee, melee. Thank you, uh, Gary. يوم عبيتس دقكم من سمعكم من البات مهارت قولوا هم غير قالوا كي تمشي لو تي لو تي تمشي
We already got a hater. His name is Gary Tesfaye. Tesfaye. <laughs> we haven't even started yet. That's just crazy. Money, huh? I don't know what that means, that green. All right. Let me unmute my people. Okay. <laughs> Gary wants to know many, huh? Dale, you gotta, okay, hold on, I'm on a mute, okay. okay. Gary, Gary said many things. That's the whole point of the show, Gary. We're trying to <laughs> start and explain who we are. So you gotta, you gotta uh, have a little patience, brother, so you can, many not many Anyways, I'm going to tell you what I say, Team Freedom, um, different walks of life. You know, we our show be be the whole inanimate Christian, Muslim, Kulhana, Bahasa, Muslim, Abdina Zara. Although religion is not an issue, there's a lot of people that try to make it an issue. But so I want to nip it in the bud immediately. Right now, we have all kinds of religions here. That's what I like. Um, we have uh, our sister us, Islam. Mashallah, inshallah, my cousin Dahlia. Um, I grew up with Dahlia. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, Dalu. Let me, Hello. while you're talking, I'm gonna kick out this uh, okay. Gary or whatever. Can you hear me well? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, my name is Dahlia Adero. Um, I'm, I grew up in the States and uh, uh, my parents are freedom fighters. Um, they were both in the ELF. My dad's Muslim, my mom's Christian, so I grew up with, uh, with you know, both both cultures in my um, in my household. So it's honestly a beautiful thing, um, and yeah. So it just introduces me to a lot of different type of Eritreans that um, you know a lot of a lot of people that I grew up with weren't introduced to, weren't you know even aware that they existed. So I think that's a great thing about my life, my childhood. What up? Where, what, where in Eritrea are you from, Dalia? Um, well, you know, are you Tigre? Are you Kunama? Tigrina? What are you? Okay, Tigre. well, my mom is from Akola Gazai, so she's Habasha Tigrinya, and my dad is um, Bija. So he's from two tribes in the, from the Bija. Basically, um, you know, Bija has several tribes within it, and he's Artega and Hafniyama. So nice. he's from the Barka area specifically um, like Sawa near uh, the town is called Alet and um, the largest I mean the the town I mean it's not a town it's actually a village the town that's near Alet would be Akordat. Nice okay thank you Dahlia my little cousin <laughs> now we're gonna go to uh, Jonas Waldu where you at Jonas tell us uh, who you are and hey, how's you, it, how's it going? hold on so how you can make it are you no team freedom? How you mix with us? Who are you? What are you doing? Where are you at? Okay, okay. So I'm Jonas, and uh, I definitely support team freedom. And I also support uh, Vital Yaka USA, the diplomacy department. And the reality is we're all in the same game together. Uh, constitutional democracy in Eritrea. We're trying to make a change. We're trying to make everything better than what it is right now. And so that's where we are right now. And I'm actually physically here in D.C. right now. So if you hear the background noise, it's because there's a lot of people here. Uh, we, we had a, this is our second day event. Yesterday was the first day, today's the second day, and tomorrow we have another event. So I'll dig in deep into that a little bit later on. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now. That's what we're doing, pretty excited about it. And I'm, I'm very happy to be here with you, Captain Air Chair, also with uh, Dala and also uh, Salem. It's good to see y'all. And uh, yep, that's it, that's where we're at. Okay. All right. I appreciate that, brother uh, Jonas uh, Salam. Without further ado, everybody knows Salam. Don't call it Salam. You got to call it Salam. Yeah, you can't say Salam. Yeah. Right. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Salam. I'm a new spokeswoman for Team Freedom here for, I think it's like my third or fourth time. So thank you for having me again. Um, 
I don't know. Like, I feel like I've shared a lot of the information that they both shared. So do you have any specific questions that I should answer today? Or should I just like, sh is that? You're going to help me uh, co-host my two uh, family members here? Yes, um, exactly. But this, is, this isn't a formal discussion. This is an open discussion for the older generation um, to see what the younger generation thinks because they're all affixed one direction right. and they don't understand for us if we have a disagreement, it's a simple matter of, Dahlia, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? For them, it's gotta be like a Cut thousand people involved, yeah, yeah, all that <laughs> extra. Um, a few things before we begin, uh, go ahead, Yona. So we had a little section here uh, where they had, uh, they asked me, hey, Yona, uh, go ahead and get the youth together real quick and uh, so we can do a segment. And uh, immediately the first thing I said was, first of all, Let's get, get rid of that word, youth, first, because I really don't like that word. So I said, just we're going to call them emerging leaders. And what that does is it does two things. Number one, it empowers them. And number two, it holds them more accountable on who they need to be. And so they can be a leader for themselves at minimum. They can be a leader for themselves. And then emerging leaders, they can be leadership for others as well. So. We had the segment, they introduced themselves as emerging leaders. They all gave their viewpoints of how Eritrea needs to be, uh, what the first thing they would do as things uh, change. And they even talked about what they're gonna do right now to make the change. So emerging leadership is pretty much where it's at. And then they stopped using the word youth. So it was a blessing. Excellent. Emergent leaders is what you guys are utilizing for the youth. I like that. Um, That's great. Nadia. I want to hop into Dahlia and I want to ask her some questions. Dahlia, you being of the Islam uh, religion, when you see, cut the corporate crap. <laughs> when you see, um, when you see all these talks of Tigray Tigrini, I know I've been facing that a lot lately, mm -hmm. and I try to be as clear as I can when I tell them without the nine Biher and Eritrea, there could be no Eritrea. You know what I mean? Unless you get all nine together and they're all fighting for the same type of freedom, there could be no freedom without the nine be here. There is no unity. There is no Eritrea without the nine be here. What do you think about that? Um, absolutely, you're, you're right. Um, I mean, there is no Eritrea without all the different, you know, people in Eritrea. Um, I think a lot of people are just more so concerned about an alliance with the Tigray people and the Tigray, you know, of course it's the same language. They have very um, cultures the same, so I think there's a lot of uh, been a lot of backlash due to people just assuming that there's more to it. Like, you know, maybe I'm guessing from what I heard is that, you know, oh, now it's one thing to help them, but it's one thing to kind of get them involved in our internal issues. I think that's what people are more so concerned about. Um, and yeah, I mean, as a Muslim, uh, Muslim Eritrean and, and me being also, you know, um, from Tigrinya as well, you know, I, uh, I feel as though there's just a disconnect in our country. But with the Tigray situation, um, I just think there are neighbors and we should definitely help um, any of our neighbors if they're being oppressed. I mean, that's our duty. I mean, that's that's how I feel, you know. So I just think people are just more con concerned with afterwards, you know. OK, so now that we, you know, we we're helping them, um, you know, do all Tigray people feel this way? you know or is it just the ones that we're working with or the ones who are so i think that's what people are concerned about um just making sure that there's a line drawn you know um with pe with uh, people who are not eritrean that's it I, I think that's um that's pretty much it but i don't see anything wrong with what you're doing i think it's great um bringing awareness on what's happening out there it's just unfortunate that um our eritrean uh youth have to get involved in the war and i think that's really another major um you know, tragedy. So, Salem, <clears throat> I know uh, you and I see eye to eye on a lot of things. My question to you is, lately I've been facing a lot of backlash from Tigray Tigrini because I say Tigray Tigrini, it's not logical. Because I feel like, how can that work when the history of Eritrea, if you study it with, um, uh, what's his name, uh, the one who brought freedom to Eritrea, somebody help me out. Um, Idris Awate, right? Yeah. And our Muslim brothers, Bini Amir, this, Kunama, all of them, all of them collectively, right? Tigray. How is it possible to isolate 
eight or six beheaders and think you can run Eritrea with one or two, it's like we all know it's not logical. Where do you think that ideology even comes from? Like it, if you know anything about life or any type of politics, you don't even have to be a politician. I know as a soldier what it takes to get a nation and separate them. But I also know the backlash that comes with that. Because someone, if someone, if, if a group of people in Eritrea are not happy, you're going to be facing uprisings, coups, wars, all kinds of stuff, more death, more death. Why not just collectively work together to bring Eritrea where it was in the beginning? Why do we even have to even cross these? Do you think these are self-interest groups that have something to gain? Um, yeah, I think the ideology comes from, honestly, like probably from the Italians, like our idea of just being better than each other. We want, to, like, I think the privilege, and then there's like, obviously there's 50% uh, Tigrinya people in the country. So I genuinely think that Tigrinya people have tried to, have utilized that majority to be like the ruling class and they like having that privilege and then i also just think what the u.s did with islamophobia and spreading that since 2001 i'm sure it started before that but ever but since then it's been really crazy um eritrea bought into that as well so um because i mean i don't think there was a divide like that before i I, mean, I could be wrong but i don't think it was that bad uh back in the day or I don't even think it was existent, to be honest. But again, I grew up with a lot of propaganda of Eritrea, so maybe I'm wrong. But I just don't think religion really was an issue. Um, and now the whole ideology comes from the fact that, like, um, I think it's all from xenophobia. Like, even though everyone lives together, they live near each other, they still have a fear of you ruling me or you ruling over me. So they would rather just align with people who they feel... Um, look like them or speak their language in this case um, with Tigray Tigrini. And so they're like, we can just all rule together. And it's, I think to me, it's about power. Like you said, it's self-interest groups. Cause like you said, Eritrea, literally the, the idea of it, the nation state ideology, the civilization is really old, but the, the nation state came from um, the people who fought for it, which is the nine tribes and the, and that's equal Muslim and Christian, like 50, 50, I think. And so, and then there's, yeah, like the nine tribes. So I just think it's nonsense. Um, and I think that it's self-interest, basically. Perfect. Jonas. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so I would say, um, I think I understood the question. Um, so I would say the history is, is real deep for Eritrea. And uh, Eritreans learn how to work together uh pretty much as a country after uh 1896 when the whole colonization happened they were literally oppressed during the time when they were with italy and british and all that kind of stuff and so they learned to work together for so many years and then when 41 happened and they started becoming uh more politically involved and so forth and creating their own organizations and then you had what you had and but there will always be these groups from it could be from Ethiopia or even can be internal within Eritrea that always try to divide people up and that's the that's the reality that's history it happened and so now when you get those same groups of people that are trying to divide people up the lesson that I learned from the past is just that's just who they are and we need to focus on what we have in common which is a sovereign country which is a constitutional democracy is the direction that we want so that's what we have in common justice that's the direction we need to go so all these people who try to divide and so forth, it's, it's deep rooted, you know what I mean? And so with our uh, two grand neighbors, we know, we know that we have to be good with our neighbors and they have to be good with us in order for us to take it to another level. That's the reality of it. You're always going to have those group of people that do what they do, but we just got to size them up and move them out and bring them to justice the way it needs to be. And then that way we can stay united and stay strong and stay moving forward. Absolutely. Sorry, I forgot Saho. You guys know what I mean when I say nine beheads. Rashida, all of them. Um, so my question to you guys, I've noticed lately the most sought out flag is Melee. And Team Freedom, us, we don't really dictate which flag you bring to Salamo Selfie, for example. But Captain Eddie, in my history, I love Melee. I represent Melee. That's just my preference, right? Now, 
Right. Put it around your neck, brother. So, so when I started rocking melee everywhere, I'm not saying I'm the one that brought it back to life. I'm just saying now everybody's on melee. Everybody's hitting up my cousin Jonas, Karane, and my brothers and send me melee scarves, send me melee, melee, melee. What you got a mokum gin? But your Masai uh oh Jonas is out. You got a mokum at your Masai sideways. It's your Masai uh after selling all selfie and all that, they'd be like, hey, what's that flag? Actual Eritreans ask me what's that flag? I'm like, what? These younger, you know, 45 and under. Dawi, if you're Eritrean, why do you always carry that blue flag? I'm like, come again? Where you they been? They have no knowledge of it. It's sad. Yeah, I'm like, where you been? How do you not know what your history is? We only have one flag. I'm like, no, brother, you don't understand. You need to understand our history to understand where these flags come from. You need to understand our history to understand what melee is. What Mele does for Hizbi Eritrea. If you don't understand that, how do you understand what the new flag is? They're like, oh, can you teach me? I'm like, yeah, that's why I have these panels like this. Dalia, go ahead, explain Mele, how you feel about Mele. Well, with the flag, I feel like, you know, that flag represents our foundation, you know. Um, and, you know, there is a constitution with it as well, which I've been actually looking over. And, um, and because since we don't have a constitution right now. And um, I think that. Uh, it's definitely something that people need to begin to think about because um, we need to get back to what, and our parents fought together and they weren't worried about what tribe you're from, what religion you're from. They were united as a force. And I do believe that it can happen again in regards to us uniting as one country. I just think that um, we need to be willing to have these uncomfortable conversations <laughs> and, uh, and get through it, you know? Uh, people get offended. And you're going to get offended by some things and it's going to happen, you know, um, but I think the only way we can get through it and, um, you know, work on making a change is if we have these discussions um, to unite us, you know, uh, I feel like all over Africa, all over the world, colonization has caused all these different nations to be divided, you know. I mean, it's everywhere, literally almost every country, tribal wars, tribal issues when they get their independence and the leader, the dictator. So I just feel like if we go back to our roots and, you know, what our original um, plan was, um, we can definitely make it happen. So that flag represents that for me. And, uh, and I feel like people shouldn't get offended, you know, if you're, um, if you, whichever flag you, you know, it's just a different understanding how you were raised, what you were taught. And, uh, and, and that's just, you got to respect everybody's, you know, wishes and what they choose to uh, represent themselves with. We have a uh, Sahaya uh, saying no one around in the world know about Malay flag. Well, Brukti, I would disagree with you because if you knew Eritrean history, you would know how how Malay came about. I'm not even talking about Jabha and Shabia and EP. I'm not talking about. I'm just saying Malay by itself. I'm not from the Italians to where at now. Everyone understands Malay. But people choose to call it the Jabha flag. No, Mele is Mele. It stands on its own. It doesn't matter who carries it. It represents. You know what's crazy? I, I was watching the um, Independence video. You know, in Asmara, how they do that big celebration, they overdo it. So, anyways, I was watching it, and in one scene, I was surprised. Um, there were there was a, a bunch of people coming out with that flag on the streets, and this was about like three before COVID, like maybe that year before COVID. So. For people not to say that, I think they just say that to, you know, um, maybe upset us or upset you, but they know about the flag, you know? Um, you know, they know that that was our original flag and it was, you know, the flag was changed over time and, and after independence and that's it. So I just feel like some people are just very petty and they just, you know, want to say nasty uh, comments and to but just rile you up and get you to react a certain way, but. Yeah, but when Eritrea was a, uh... When we when we got melee, right? The the thing is, the world knew of the Eritrean flag being that. Now that Isaiah Sirat, um, now that Isaiah Sirat, Daniel and them, they, you guys got a lot of movement back there. 
now that Sai Sira has had this new flag in place, I'm not denouncing it. I'm just saying that uh, to all the youth has to understand the history. To understand Eritrea, you have to understand Mele, the nine Bihars, then the new flag, Isaiah Sirat, Kulu. If you don't know this, you can't just chop off one part of our history and think the youth is just going to understand, starting with the new flag. Eritrea is not 30 years old, even though freedom from the dirt, Komtati Zarabu, you can't just say Eritrea started when the new flag started. That's asinine, you know what I mean? So why would you choose not to understand Mele? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, now, question is, and I'll ask uh, our brother Daniel, um, if he's listening, I don't know he's talking. Daniel, Samanillah? Oh, he's muted. I think. You're muted. Unmute. All right. I don't know if they can hear us, but let's move on. So, Dahlia or uh, Salim, I'll ask you. We can't hear you guys, man. Salim, I'll ask you. You guys figured it out? You on us? All right, Salam, I'll go to you until they figure out their mute issue. Um, um, why do you think people choose to we don't. avoid melee, like how people are coming over here talking about what is melee, who is melee? I told you I was raised in YP, like uh, with YPFJ kids, like believing that, right? So we were told that flag was an unelected flag that was given to us by the United Nation when we were federated with Ethiopia. Therefore, it's, it's, not, it's still a sign of slavery. They refused to acknowledge that most of the tribes still acknowledged only that flag. Like, I think it's only one tribe, like one, it's only PFDJ people who really love the, the green, red, red, and blue flag. And we were taught that that's the patriotic flag because Eritrean people chose that one. We also were told that it was, um, this may not be true, but we were told that it was uh, a, the best flag because it represented everyone since they brought together both flags, like, not, and we call, they do call it the Jebha flag. So they're like, okay, the Jebha flag, which is the, um, the 30 year wreath, right? Um, that part they put on to the green, red, and blue flag, which is the Shabia flag minus the star. So they thought it was a way to appease everyone. So when I saw that flag, honestly, when my, I first went to a Yaakov festival in 2018, when I was about to speak, or 2019, I was about, to, I spoke on all of this stuff and how I was brainwashed and I just didn't really know the history. And um, I was about to take a picture with a group of people and they had me near that flag. And I remember like, like subconsciously, I was like, no, subconsciously, I was like, oh my God, like, am I a traitor? Um, this, I don't know this flag. Like, what is this flag? Like, what does it represent? You know, because I was told that it wasn't, it didn't really represent the Eritrean people. Then my friend Fabian was like, no, it's like my uncle literally voted on this flag. There were a certain group of Eritrean officials who voted on this flag. This is the only elected flag. And so with that knowledge, I try to tell my friends who were still like either on the fence or more pro-government. And they were just like, no, like that doesn't make any sense. No, we voted on that flag because we were taught that the flag that we use now is like it represents the the ocean, the blood, and the lush green lands of Eritrea, and then the 30-year wreath, which is to the 30-year the armed struggle um, representation. So, or the, yeah, the olive wreath or whatever. So, um, and it's a sign of peace. So, it's crazy, it's like to hear you say it's like petty. I can see how you can think that, but I genuinely did not know until somebody sat and I already like had to rewire my brain myself and like go through all the cognitive dissonance and then learn it. So it was like, it was, it was beautiful to learn because now I want one of those flags too. I'm about to hit your cousin Jonas for one. But like before I was so scared, I was like, what is this flag? I don't know this flag. Like not only did we never see it, we were only, we only heard about it like it was a boogeyman kind of thing like there's other flag people are gonna try to like tell you the Eritrean flag and it's not like so it's oh, wow. it, 
it's yeah, it's it's deep what goes on in those meetings and like with the events that happen. Um, we're taught a completely different part of our history, and we did not know about the split between wife between Je Jebha and Shabia and the TPLF situation. That's not spoken on in those meetings either. So you'll never find a YPMDJ kid kid who knows anything about Jebha. Um, they may know that Idris um, Awata or Idris Hamid Awata started the war, but they um, but they still will be like, no, well, Jebha was actually extreme. They were we had to exile it, and that's the reason. Now we have to cleanse the country, and that's why this and this. And they won't. They will not. It's 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 a lot more to it than being petty. It's actual brainwashing. Well, the yeah. thing is with me, it was that was more so to the person that commented in regards to um, adults saying that. It wasn't more so the youth. Yeah, the youth, I get it because the parents are the ones kind of telling you everything. And I have a few friends that were grew up in YPFDJ as well. So we used to have these discussions when we were younger. Yeah, because my father wasn't the type to say, you know, you can only hang out with people who agree. Or he's like, you hang out with, you can, all the just, just, you know, all the Eritreans, whether they're pro government, pro not, they just, as long as you know their stand. And you know, and you know your stand. You know, um, you can be friends with anybody. Just be careful, and um, and just know that as an Eritrean, you're not always going to agree. Right. You know, if we're fighting for democracy, you can't be angry because someone has a different opinion than you, a different stand than you. So I, that's how I was raised. That's but I noticed true. that a lot, of, a lot of other people are like, oh, they they support the government. Don't hang with them. Don't you know? And to me, that's extreme. It is absolutely. So, ladies, uh, Jonas and uh, um, Danny, can you hear me? So I'm going to call it Danny. I think it's still muted. Danny, can you hear me? Can they like exit out and come back in? I think we did that know. last. Jonas and uh, Danny, you guys are going to have to exit and come back in. We can't hear you guys. Perfect. All right. So let, let's talk about this uh, freedom. Let's talk about nuts in there. And it, this topic really irritates me. Here's why. If we're celebrating nuts in Eritrea, right? Okay, think about this. If we're celebrating that's in that Eritrea, there's a lot of comments on here. Someone saying, hey, don't don't call Malay Jabha flag. I didn't. I said people call it the Jabha flag, probably because when Jabha left and then things change, I'm just you know stating what other people right. speak to me. But the younger generations that know about it, sometimes we call it the Jabha flag, and that's okay. Again, what I'm saying is, Natsinet Eritrea. Tell me what you know about Natsinet Eritrea, liberation of Eritrea from Ethiopia and all that. Go ahead, Dalia. Uh, Actually, you well, know what, Dalia? Hold on. Let's see if these guys are come on. If they okay. can't, then we have to. Okay. okay. I can hear them now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Can you tell us? Hey, uh, introduce yourself, sir. You look very sharp today. Very, very handsome. <laughs> tell us. Tell us about uh, Natsinet Eritrea. Actually, first tell us where you're at, what you're doing, and then about the Nazinet Eritrea and all that. Okay, well, um, thank you for inviting me to, uh, to introduce myself and uh, talk to you guys. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Abraham. I am here at uh, Baito Yako uh, uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. We had a, a big uh, seminar going on here. So uh, I am one of the uh, by Toya active member. And um, uh, well, we started uh, on Friday, we had a, a big demonstration going on. And we went to State Department and uh, the uh, UNCR. And uh, uh, the turn, it was very good. So um, if I start talking about this, it's going to be going and going. So I'm going to get to the, your. Uh, uh, question. So not in it for me, uh, what I remember. Uh, I was in Texas and uh, when they announced the uh, uh, independence, basically we stopped the car in the middle of uh, uh, traffic light. We start dancing until the police come and uh, give us a ticket <laughs> and all that stuff. So the celebration was crazy and literally uh, I was my, with my friends at uh, this uh, traffic light, so we blocked the whole, uh, the whole, the whole moving traffic one way, 
and they had to call the police and then we went trouble that day so the excitement was crazy and i don't know how i explain or how i felt that was uh, crazy and um good so uh back to your uh to my so the reason i'm fighting right now is basically because they took away my that's a net so um uh, Elab elaborate on that, Daniel. How and what do you mean they took away your nuts and nuts? For example, if we celebrate Independence Day for Eritrea, right? Everybody gets it. Uh, he's off. If we celebrate Independence Day for Eritrea, which is the 24th, right? Yeah. yeah. So if my birthday is okay. on the 23rd, say that again. Okay. If we if we celebrate the Independence Day for Eritrea, right? You hear me? If we celebrate the Independence Day for Eritrea, my question to all of the whole panel here is, what are we really celebrating? All right, we can't are hear we you. Are we celebrating? You guys killing me, fam. Are we celebrating Natinet Eritrea from the dirt and then Given Eritrea to a size of work for slavery, where is the freedom? Somebody has to explain to me, where is the freedom? You're young, you're smart, you're educated, you guys have degrees, you're not dumb. You're not some person that's herding sheep and has no idea of politics. My question to you two ladies is, what are we celebrating here? Are we celebrating Freedom from the Derg? Are we celebrating freedom from the Derg and then slavery into Esaias? You see what I'm saying? So how right. should, why should I celebrate the 24th when I should just be praying for my people that are dying who went from one freedom to the next slavery all in one motion? I freedom agree. I agree. You know, we've never celebrated um, Independence Day. Actually, in I believe in the early 90s, um, when I hear my family, when they came to the States, um, I mean, my father never went and never, never celebrated because he, I mean, first of all, the flag represents, um, you know, a lot of people were killed when, when in, in the early, late eighties and the early nineties that were in the ELF, you know, a lot of the big leaders who were going to come back to Eritrea and try to, you know, join and make, make a difference. A lot of them were murdered in Kassala and, you know, and a lot of them, um, you know, a lot of people consider that this new flag to represent murder. I'm just going to be honest with you. A lot of people do. So there's nothing wrong with the people who, you know, might not be aware of that. You know, they might just say, okay, you know, this is our new flag, you know, use that. But, I, but a lot of people don't celebrate it because they, it's, it was a, it was very sad. Yeah. We got our independence as an independent country, but the people didn't get freedom, you know, and that's really the concern. So, like I said, it was kind of split, you know, um, we went to celebrate with my mom, you know, the independence in 92, 93, and it was, it was great and it was fun. Everybody was celebrating, but some people were kind of skeptic about it. And this is why, you know, 30 years later, we know why, you know, they knew what they were capable of and they were right all along. So at this point, you know, no, I don't celebrate it um, at all by choice. Um, and I think that we just have a lot of work to do. You know, it's very sad when I see people dancing and making, you know, it's just kind of like, it's a delusional thing to me, you know, is they're delusional. And that's there's nothing else to to say about it, you know. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. So Salem, are you less Eritrean if you don't celebrate May twenty fourth freedom independence of Eritrea? Like Dahlia said, she's mourning for people than celebrating like me, because as we dance and had throw guaylas, my people still in prison. My people still in containers. All my Muslim brothers and their churches is getting shut down and burned and all their leaders are getting in prison. All my Tigrayans and, uh, are getting murdered next door and all my, all my other Eritreans are either starved, no water, no food, using uh, Corona as excuse, and then getting all my young and sending them to Tigray. Okay, I'll, I'll bring uh, him to answer that. Sending all, all my, my, uh, my youngins to go defend Eritrea. What type of nonsense is this? Go ahead, okay. Danny. All right, well, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we had a little uh, connection problem, but um, to answer your question, I celebrate uh, Independence Day. The reason I'm uh, celebrating Independence Day is because Isaiah Safwarki didn't give me my Independence Day. 
my mm. people fought for that. Right. My people. Right? It's not like given. It's not like uh, uh, approved by him or by any by by Hikadev or anybody. Okay, so belongs to me. That's mine. So, but I'm celebrating now in a different way because it's not. I'm not going to dance because my people are dying. So uh, they are. They, we have hunger. We have uh, underage go to war and all. You name it. We have a lot of problems. But so I am making a point because. It's not about dancing now. It's about remembering my heroes, what they did for the country. Okay, but that gives me a point to go back and fight again to free my people. So the point here is, it's not about dancing. It's not about celebrating. It's not. It's not like that. But it gives me a hope. I'm trying to give my trying to give a hope to my people. So the so well well we are here. We're trying to gather our energy. So we are working in our unity right. to go back and free our country. So to go back to the, the, uh, the flags and stuff like uh, we guys are talking about, I respect everybody's opinion, but our people, one of these days, pretty soon, they're going to choose what flag they want. You know? Absolutely. What president they want. So the government belong, the, 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 the power is for the people. So they choose what they want to do. Inshallah. Me and you, we're not going to talk about, uh, you guys want this, you got, no, no, no. The people, the youngsters, especially you, the ladies, I respect you. And I will give you more power to you guys. The youth, the youth people, emerging leaders. they have to, the emerging leaders, as uh, Jonas said. My job is to empower you to come the first, uh, 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 office, uh, governors, presidents, all that stuff. So my job is, I'm older than you, so my job is to be to be next to you if you, if you ask me to advise you to what I know, okay? But I have to make, so my job is to bring leaders, the youngsters, the educated people, the experienced ones, to bring them in power. That is, so the generation that, has to change because, well, to me, uh, I don't want to talk about dictator because I don't want to talk about assassin and all them. Because who am I preaching? I'm not talking to another foreigner guy. You're air trans, so you already know. So my my goal is let's come to the point. How are we going to defeat this uh, monster, basically? So let's move on. So anyway, they call me for a meeting. Thank you. I appreciate you. But uh, when I go home. We're gonna have a Zoom meeting with you guys one day, so I relate, I relate a lot to you guys, and then thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you, you, my you. brother Daniel. We thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Howard. I'll see you later, bro. All right, thank thank you. you. Hey, I wanted to say uh, that was eloquently stated in a sense of I can understand the flip side of the coin, in a sense of hey. I'm not celebrating Independence Day on behalf of Isaias. Mm -hmm. I'm celebrating Independence Day of, on behalf of me and how I would like to see my country and all for my martyrs that died. He stated that eloquently. And I like the way he explained that because forgot, for me- I forgot to say one thing. And guess what? We can do it. We can do it can. with you, with you, with everybody. We can do it because we are, we are smart, educated young girls young uh, youth organization here so my job is to empower you and i believe on you i believe on you yeah that's a that's a, that's a word that i forgot to tell you guys i have to believe on something some people they believe Thank in you. the wall some people live on on something but i have to believe on and, what i know and who emerging leaders so you guys are the leaders my son is going to be a leader Amen. So we appreciate yeah. My you. daughter is going to be a leader. So I have a little princess at home. So <laughs> Amen right. to that. Much love. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Yeah, I really, I really like the way he explained that. Um, because for a second, I was one sided where I'm like, I'm not celebrating when people are dying. But then you got to remember the martyrs that fought the Durgi for our freedom. We have to celebrate them too. 
Now, Sabah, you could get off the Jabha thing. Nobody's talking about Jabha. We were just trying to make a statement about how people say the flag relates to Jabha hometown. Let's, let, we're on a whole different topic, sweetheart. Try to catch up, please. Thank you. Anyways, um, um, with that being said, I like the way he stated that. What do you have to add, Jonas? Um, justice. That's what it comes down to. Uh, justice, justice, justice. Justice is going to be the common ground that gets everybody on the right track. At the end of the day, for example, uh, the U.S. passed this resolution that came out re recently, 97, uh, Resolution 97. Um, in the event that they don't comply with that resolution, chances are there's going to be a sanction. Sanction on who? Sanction on the, uh, the uh, officials, not sanctions on the, the people. And so at the end of the day, a democratic constitutional air chair is going to be put, is going to put more money in people's pockets, it's going to give more sovereignty in people's uh, nation. It's going to provide more liberty. So it's a benefit for the whole. So the, the whole point is justice, justice, justice is the focus point, is the common ground for everybody. Right. Okay. Thank you, Saba. She was responding to you, Dahlia. Now I see what she was saying. We got it. Um, thank you. Um, what was that? I, I'm not reading the comments. I didn't want to get distracted. There's Saba was responding to you about that. She said, Jabha committed a lot of crimes. Don't try to wash their hands of blood and gaslight us with your lies. But I ain't worried not, about that. You know no, me. Well, That's no, but comical it's, to me. So yeah, but what she's not understanding, Dahlia, is as your this is the thing about Havasha. I mean, I'm sorry, Eritreans. If she's Eritrean or whatever she is, here's the thing. One thing they don't understand is topic, discussion, right? What is a book? A book is something you read to learn from, right? Forget your opinions. We're just trying to discuss a point. And each person's allowed to elaborate on that point, right? Regardless how you feel about it, that's your point. So attacking someone because uh, what Saba doesn't understand is, um, Jonas, your finger is not pretty for us, bro. We don't like looking at your finger. What, what, what Saba doesn't understand is I'm 100% agree in agreement with Dahlia. No way about it. Everything you said, I'm 100% in agreement with you. So it's just a matter of trying to educate the people. Now, if you no, know, Saba, that's not shade, because here's the thing. That's just how I perceive the information. Now, what you have to understand, Hafta, is you're welcome to come here, but we should speak with facts. You can't say she's lying if she's reading the history from history books and regurgitating it. So therefore, we have the people's families who died. I mean, we, we take care of some people whose families were murdered. I mean, not me, but my family does. You know, when I went back home to Sudan, you know, but next to right by the by the border, Richard, I visited people whose parents were murdered, who were leaders in the ELF. Like these aren't lies, but if they want to, they want to believe that it's lies. And they want to continue. That's fine. I don't entertain that because I'm more so trying to you know, unite with my people who are willing to, you know, work together and make a difference. If I focus on, you know, the negative people who are just constantly going to stay outrageous, you know what I mean, comments, then it's just going to hold me back, you know? So that's how I, um, that's how I try to move, you know, when it comes to. Well, here's the, the thing. Politics thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Hey, B man, you need to face the light, brother. Turn the other way. Right now you're total black. Um, here's the thing. We can discuss Jabha Shabia EPLF contact the historical data. Right now in 2021, that's not the business. Right now, right. all everyone in this on the screen right now has one common enemy. What is that a common enemy? It's the yeah. government of Eritrea. <laughs> yes. Is Saya Saporki Sirat Hadef is the number one enemy to all of us. We can't see you, Vini man. You gotta turn and face the light, brother. Um that's a little better. Okay, now we can see you at that handsome man. So here's I was the thing. To, I was trying to show you my farm and my cows, but I guess it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all it was all blacked out, brother. Um what I wanna I'm gonna tell you guys a little interesting story and then I'm gonna have you capitalize on it. So check it out. I need your undivided attention, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I went to a meeting. It was a lot of Tigrayan. I was invited to a Tigrayan meeting. I went there with respect. Right, I want their respect. Now, you have to understand, Tigray is facing a lot of atrocities. Tigray is facing genocide. Somebody's making a lot of quack quack noise. T Tigray is facing a lot of genocide. Tigray is facing famine, man-made stuff, like people 
not because they don't have food, it's because somebody won't allow them to have food. So as humans, mothers, fathers, brothers, cousins, right? If we have a heart, for me to say I care for my Tigrayan brothers and sisters, that doesn't make me any less Eritrean. People call you this and that and that we just sell out. No, listen, I love my Eritreans, right? Everybody on this board panel right now is Eritrean because I personally know each one of you, so you can't lie to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is, who cares? My thing is, if I care for Tigrayan children, you guys seen the recent one where a young 12 year old girl got burned alive and all this crazy nonsense that's just too much to bear. And she survived to the bone. Now here's the thing, in that Tigrayan meeting, they said, 90% were very respectful. 10% were going in on me. I had my sister Salamina in there trying to protect me. Um, someone said, you should be ashamed of yourself to be Eritrean. Uh, you know, you, your people did this to us. Your people are doing this. I can argue it. When she said your people, she talking about Sarah Atisayas and his soldiers. I can't argue that. The whole world knows this. All the idiots that were saying, we weren't in Tigray and this and that. I get it. Now they look stupid. I get it. My thing, my question is this. My response to her was, she said you should be ashamed to be Eritrean. You know, blah, blah, blah. How can you sit there and do this and this and that? I said, listen, sister Leah. And please don't take this disrespectful. Just listen to me. I, Dawit, was born in Eritrea. I was born under a bed. My mom cut her own umbilical cord under a bed, right? And my dad was out the door shooting and he got hit up, he got shot. Who was attacking my family? TPLF and TPLF. TPLF, TPLF were attacking my family, right? Right? You guys, you guys know the history behind that, right? Okay. Yes. Now, if I'm running for my life with my family, I, Dawit, because my father was Jabha, escaped Eritrea, I should be the one that's most likely mad at TPLF, EPLF, but I choose a different route. I choose humanity. I choose organizing the people. I choose love, you know what I mean? So I said, sister, when you say you should be ashamed to be Eritrean, are you talking to me? Because right now, my family didn't kill no one, we didn't do nothing, we got attacked by Tigrayans and Eritreans together, and we were shot out of Eritrea, and we took off to survive, right? So when you say you should be ashamed to be Eritrean, you're probably talking about Sir'at Isayas and the Eritrean Higdaf that we see everywhere talking about, you know, people should die and all that garbage stuff that they talk. I understand that. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is not insensitive. I'm not being insensitive. I'm trying to teach my Tigrayan brothers and sisters that, hey, there's our, there are like myself and Dahlia that came as Jabha children and our parents ran that were getting killed by uh, TPLF and EPLF. And we're, we're innocent. If anyone should be mad, it should be us. But ironically, we're the ones standing up for Eritreans and Tigrayans against Higdef. Does that make sense? All right, I'll let you uh, caveat on that, uh, DJ Shida. Unmute yourself. I don't know what I got myself into, so I'm a little bit behind. I do see my boy Jonas, who I'll do from AKA Vegas, now Indiana, what's up? I haven't met Salim, hello. Dahlia, how you doing? And then with Howie. I'm so, um, what about English? Delica, but to green, I'm going to go matter. The Hanan of the great, the great, Arab, you know. But anyway, I don't know what's the topic. I really caught up late when you called me earlier. I was in the road, and you can see I'm all like street now, so I use my street name. But uh, my name is Binia Mamanel, I'm from Central California. Um, I'm in the medicine field. A um, little bit about me. I think mostly I'm probably the oldest here. So, um, 
not the most experienced as you guys, but I grew up, um, my early years was, uh, I was born in Hakota and uh, my family are from Karen. And as we were like children, we were, I was raised in the war. So unfortunately, because my parents were uh, involved. So the best thing for us was to take us to Meda when we were young. So majority of my other adolescence years was in Sudan, as most of you guys, I heard somebody say Kasala. That's where I was uh, majority of my teen years before I came to America 30 years ago. And as far as the movement, I think most Eritreans, somehow we either related or we're connected to everything that happens back home, whether it was, uh, I don't know why my screen is all full screen now. I can no, only see I put you on full screen myself. Okay, so. Everyone's listening to you. Uh, I think if I thought a little bit, you guys were talking about Independence Day and how it impact each one of us. And as Eritreans, I think a lot of us also have sorrow and sadness with that with that what's going on today without taking sides because uh, what affects everybody in the world whether it's in Tigray and Ethiopia it affects all of us because we all have loved ones that are involved in the war so whether it's nieces cousins uncles aunties whatever what it touches when somebody hurts in the Horn Africa we all kind of affect somehow politically I believe uh, you guys talked a little bit behind uh, I might be behind I think the captain was talking about how, you know, he's very passionate and he stands for everybody. You know, he hates to see people hurt and he hates to see Eritrea what it is today uh, in a mess where everybody so in the West that have opportunity, have grown and have moved forward in their life. And then they look back and they see how disastrous it is back home. The leadership has not lived up to what it was when Awat and Hafash was basically victory to masses. So when my dad died or when you guys family members died, they all died thinking that when Eretra is free one day that we actually get the fruits of the roots that they have basically uh, made sacrifices for. So all of us that came to America or Europe have gotten some kind of education and some opportunity. We feel so, I believe, we feel so proud to just go back and help our people, not just financially, also kind of go back in our fields and impact the people back home. I think I've heard Salim one day when she was talking to you and her, her visit back home and as a teenager and how she felt and she came around family that all these years that she was talking about how her people majority were like pro government and how her speaking is kind of like people almost looked at her as like she betraying her country or Captain, when you talk about Eretra and you show your passion, some people see you as you betraying your people. And believe it or not, my brother sits with Isaiah Saforki as we speak right now. So uh, when I speak and I say something, people actually call me and say, you're serious, you're gonna say something. Are you not worried about your brother? Are you not worried about so and so on? And then actually they'll call me and say, hey, please don't say anything politically because you actually have people right there and you this, this and that. But nevertheless, it's not about me or you or anything. It's about the people. The people that are the less fortunate that were all promised clean water, medicine, and some, you know, food, you know, just the basics. And they're not getting that. And that impacts us as Eritreans. Not only that, when we see a lot of the children that were like our people, all their wealth is basically their children. So they grow up to help them in the farm or help them out financially or take care of them because there's no nursing home, there's no whatsoever. And when those children are gone because they were put in Sawas young and deceased in wars that are really can be prevented and the deaths and can be resolved in a way we all think things like conflict can be resolved, not not just by guns. So this this is what makes all of us frustrated. And I think all of us are talking about how how Independence Day. How do we feel about it today? You know, uh, I remember growing up, going to college when I joined Music World and I was performing and trying to be the first Eritrean hip hop group and you know hold the mic one hand and get the crowd going on in English and Tigrinya like in the early 2000s. I remember like the first invitation we got is like come to Sawa and perform. I'm like oh shit. We get to go to Sawa and perform with Abraham Forke. We're like, let's go. And then I realized, oh shit, my partner can't be, my partner in the group can't be performing because his name is in the list that he can't enter the country. And I'm like, what? I'm talking to Shengab, who was the person in charge of Sawa. And I'm like, so you're telling me there's no guarantee we can come back. Something can be happening foul because what he said and lyrically and what he wrote an article. So at that time, I didn't feel Eretra was free. I didn't feel that like imprisoning 
uh, people that are journalists or closing the university or doing this. And this is crazy that we, because you were in the military at that time, a lot of us were involved because when TPLF decided to attack, you know, when this Vladimir situation got out of hand and the war was ugly and literally a lot of us, not only some of us decided to go back there and join a fight, some of us were like new eyes, all these groups that you know that right now were performed like like we have chair, president, uh, we have, Jonas here knows, we used to go and like go to Washington DC with thousands of rich and we'll flag and say, we want this to stop because we know this is gonna be, one day it's just gonna get worse and worse like a cancer that's not gonna heal, you know? And we didn't take sides. We didn't take side of our government. We didn't take side of the Tigrayan, you know, in the way on what they were doing at that time. We just felt that this is wrong. You know, this is gonna just waste people. And at the end of the day, these people are gonna stay in power, you know? And uh, at that time, I didn't inflate myself with the government. And I know people took chances. I just inflate myself like you guys with the people. And to make a long story short, um, I knew what's gonna happen in November Fourth, like sad, a lot of these TPLF, all these Tagaru right now that are listening to you, I'll be honest with you, Dawit, when we're holding signs, and this is where people come at you right now and question you sometimes. And I tell you this as a brother, because I meet with, I, meet with, I just met with YP and DJ, all of them, about a dust, like a month ago, all of them in person, we had a meeting. And uh, I come from a position where I still have my respect with them, you know? I don't agree with everything they say and everything they do especially holding a flag with the Amharu and standing in the street in DC or in LA or anything, it really broke my heart because my dad died, man, fighting dark life. He gave everything he had. My brother died in Sorona, you know what I mean? When Tagaru decided to bring all this stuff in uh, before June two, I think it was 2000, right? At the end of it, before that. So there's a lot of unhealed wound between us, you know? whether it's in the Amharu side or in the Tagaro. So our people are conflicted. My goal is to bring everybody together. Right now, when people listen to Dawit, they question that. They're like, where was Dawit all this time, right? They don't know you were in the military. Uh, where was Dawit? They call me and say, talk to your brother Dawit. Say something to him, you know? And I said, why would I say anything to him? Because he's a grown man. He's smart. What he's saying is like he's trying to speak for everybody. What most of us are not brave enough to say, he's saying it online, you know, and let's respect that, you know? So um, to make a long story short, Dawit, um, there is a problem in our society. We're so divided. It's as is winning right now, trust me. We're so divided. We all have different mentality. We all have different uh, way of looking at this. Uh, one of my biggest impact and sadness was when we were doing this in 2000, trying to stop it, there was no Togaru with us. They're not doing what are you doing right now. They were not holding flag and say, stop this and this and that. None of them. There was no Amharu at that time. It was just us Eritrean, bro. And right now, it's us Eritrean have to solve this. What we have at home, I don't, with all due respect, they're not going to have their own problem. Amharu going to have their own problem. Oromo is going to have their own problem. They're bigger than us. They have more numbers than us. That was going to have problem. Our problem is our own betrayer that is at home, you know, that caused all this issue that cause our people, all these promises that was made when he can't promise, cannot live to it. People are just start breaking, leaving the country or being in prison or sent to the war. So we cannot stop being us though. We cannot stop being us. We cannot stop what is out and have fight. We cannot stop the independence of our country. We still have to show our children. We still have to show our family that we are proud urgent. We can't let one person or whoever mentality that he have created this cancer at home to completely impact us and hate ourselves. We can't self-hate, you know? And we're not responsible for what's going on right now with Tigray because it's the people that they set with, the people that they were aligning with. When your dad was on the Jebha side, when someone dad on the other side, that the Tagar were aligning with this guy, knowing this guy, one day this is gonna happen. So to make long story short, I just feel that we, we, we're, we're like, we have a black sheep in our family and that happens. And I think it's causing more damage to our people. I hope people online or everybody, you know, like when I met with the Shabiyas with all these hate death, they admit there is a problem. None of them didn't look at me in the face and say there is no problem. The problem with them is like, let's just work together and now we'll fix this later. But it's happening like that for 30 years. It's been like, let's fix. Yes, so the Hajji, and the Hajji just, is it the Harai? You know? And that was, that's the reason a lot of us now are speaking. That's a lot of us are coming online and saying, you know, enough is enough, right? But I'm not gonna go out there, hold Tigray 
flag. I'm not gonna go out there and hold. I'm how to flag. I just think we have our own problems, you know, that we need to work on. That's where me and you and everybody that is listening, with all the respect, I believe Tagaru knew better, you know, what was gonna happen in their country. The same way with the Haru. Their stuff goes longer than our problems, but we're not even <laughs> it sucks that we're trying to clean somebody's house where our house is dirtier than the most, you know. So right. that's so what no, I mean. that makes sense. We can see gear in the back. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, um, um here's something. You made three points that I want to elaborate on. First point. This person, Victory 2021. No, you are attached. It's attacked by, I'm, I think she's trying to say attacked by EPLF and TPLF, not Tigrayans in her trim. Correction. Course, yeah. TPLF is made of what? Tigrayans. EPLF is made of what? Eritreans. So if I really, really got to break that down for you, you're in the wrong place. Anyways, you know what I mean, the government groups. Second point. Big man said, where were you, Dawit? I wasn't in the military, right? But where were they? Are they going to turn on the internet and talk like me? Or are they going to grab a gun and go over there? So regardless if Dawit was here on the internet, neither one of us was going was to go on the ground and go fight Isaias and everybody else, right? So when people say, where were you? No, you were doing the same thing I'm doing now. Blah, blah, blah. With that said, that's covered. Now it's better late than never, too. You know, but at so least I'm at least I'm trying to make a impact on the Eritrean youth so we can learn. But best believe, like I said, give me an army, give me some land, and I'll show you what I'm made of. But that's a whole different discussion. The third point you made of BNM. Yes. Tagarus are going through whatever. You reap what you sow, whatever. I get it. EPLF, EPLF, I get it. Only problem is when I speak, I'm not speaking in support of TPLF and EPLF. There's a lot of Tigrayans that are civilians that don't support any government groups. There's a lot of Tigrayans that are just sitting there and getting murdered and have nothing to do with no government groups. There's a lot of Eritreans that just want to herd their sheep and eat their food and go to sleep and have the same dream we have. That's who I'm speaking for. I'm not holding his Tigray accountable for what TPLF did. I'm holding TPLF accountable for the actions against Eritrea, and I'm holding EPLF accountable for their part. And HIGDEF now, right? I'm not saying let's support TPLF. I'm just saying it to his beat. Come his beat. They're sitting there waiting for direction, leadership, motivation, and they're getting murdered whether they have a choice or not. Why don't they get to have a choice? Why don't they get to vote? That didn't come about because Abi Ahmed is a coward. If he really wanted TPLF, he'd have went to the mountains. Well, we know how that plays out. Mish. The Hizbi shouldn't be killed. As a soldier, I know this. Never attack the people. Attack the group or government that's working against you. Okay, now I'm gonna move to uh, Salam because she's been patiently me waiting. I don't want her to fall asleep as my co-host. Um, no, well, Salam, my question to you is, you've been to Eritrea, mm -hmm. right? You used to be uh, part of the YPFDJ uh, mafia or whatever. When you went to Eritrea and you saw everything for yourself and you said, wow, this is, this is YPFDJ? This is Higdef. This is what my people have look to have to look forward to. to When you went there and you made that transition, how did you feel? Did you say, you know what? I'm gonna slowly wean out of Higdef, or I'm immediately done now that I know better because you have to experience it. Go. Um, so, okay, well, first, can I answer the question about Independence Day, like yeah. how I feel about it? So with for me, Independence Day, um, what Danny said really resonated with me because ultimately we have two problems. We, you know, and right now we right now our big problem is uh, Isas Afriki. But if we didn't have the land, that would be a whole other problem. Like, luckily, we at least have the country, although the country has done nothing for us. But be land where people die. I understand that. But at least like. 
Because for me, like, I just imagine the utopia that can come of this once we get rid of this man and we organize, you know, it's it's a beaut- it's we could still feel that feeling of independence again, you know, very soon if possible. But like, um, I do feel like there's a beauty in it at least being recognized as its own country. Although I don't, I don't, I don't think it's something to dance about. I do see, um, I do I do still respect like what the martyrs died for. And I do think that there is a little bit of something to respect just because they simply died for it. Like out of respect for them. Like I, I think it's something that I should acknowledge. So I just wanted to say that I did agree with what Danny said. Um, Although I completely understand people who don't celebrate it. Like this year, I'm, I'm so happy we're having that prayer for peace. By the way, everyone come tomorrow. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Well, prayer for peace. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. And, who's, and can you please elaborate on who's hosting it? Of course. Team Freedom is hosting a worldwide event. <laughs> um, I think they already started in Australia, actually, in like Melbourne. Um, and so, because, you know, they're a day ahead or something, or however long ahead. They were who's invited? Can all religions come? Every religion is invited. That could be people who don't have religion. That could be Pentecostal, Catholic, Muslim. Uh, that could be Sunni or Shia in Islam. That could be, uh, like, Orthodox. And did I say Pente? Like, everybody is allowed to come. You could be Buddhist, Hindu, like, whatever. Well, there's but only one person that's not allowed to come. It's as of work, yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But um, other than that, like, I, I think this is way more fitting, you know, like to pray. At least we're recognizing that we have an Independence Day, but we have so much work to do. Um, and so to me, it doesn't make sense to dance or sing. That's nonsense. But to like light a candle, that I do. To, you know, pray. Cool. We could do that. Um, but ultimately, your question about Eritrea for me I was just thinking about it this morning, actually, the day that my cousin broke everything down to me, because I was already peeping stuff in 2010, I was 16, I was already noticing, you know, I, I think I told the story, like my bus driver in Can Sawa. Can you tell the people what peeping means? Sorry. I, I noticed, I noticed a few things, I observed quite a few things, like when I was out there, and I noticed like our bus driver couldn't, like, find, he was sleeping in the bus when everybody else was sleeping in hotels and stuff, so already that was weird to me. Um, and the, it was extreme conditions in the country. So I was just already noticing a little bit of like, you know, discrepancies, I guess, because we were told like, uh, especially a week before that, we were told like, don't give them money. They're they're well compensated. Don't even think about it. Like we can actually get in trouble, like legal trouble for giving them like anybody who served us money during the week we were on this tour. But um, when my cousin, and Eritrea sat me down, like uh, her name's Samara. She sat me down. She was like, let me be honest with you. This country is a nightmare. Like she was like, it's the government is, is against us people. It uses us as slaves. It just like all the stuff. Like she was just explaining everything to me that I had already kind of thought I noticed a little bit of, but I would have never been able to make sense of all of that. Once she told me that, it was a switch, like a light switch. Like I was just mad that she told me on my last day when I couldn't really pay attention but no like there has never been a day where and that was 2010 so yeah i never had any day where i was like well maybe no like you know i didn't know how bad it got but i did know like there was nothing good coming out of that country um especially because like the lampedusa thing that was the person who told me about that was my college professor in 2013 like he was the one who told me he was like this uh italian this mexican guy actually and he was like there was this people from a country called eritrea and i just couldn't breathe like i was in class with hundreds of people like what the what is going on here you know i already like i told you i 2010 is when i found out but i didn't understand that people were risking their children's lives like babies you know pregnant women were i was just like what is going on here so um yeah to me it's been there's like this Eritrea is a very like when I think of it it's a very sad and looming presence that follows me around I do see the beauty and what could come of it but it's not like I don't really see it the way I used to and I'm really jealous of YPFDJ kids like the ignorance is blissing is real it's so fun to think you come from the best country ever to think you come from Wakanda like you're you know it feels good but when you realize like the truth it's 
It's sad. So yeah, the point was, um, I'm really sad that that's what the martyrs died for. I've actually made a post that YPMDJ Kids called my friend about to ask him, like, why is she disrespecting us? Blah, blah, blah. Because I was like, this is, like, I was like, thank you for, it was an Independence Day post, actually. I was like, thank you to the martyrs. But I know that if they knew that this was coming, they would have stayed home. And they took offense to that. Like, I don't think that if they got to see that the outcome of what came of independence or like this, the armed struggle, I think they would have rather they stayed federated with Ethiopia because look what we're what we're going through right now. Like we don't know what can happen tomorrow. Our country is literally hanging on by a thread. So I'm I'm really resentful to be honest, but I'm trying to see the light. Thank you, Salam. Now this guy Eritrean uh, East Afro dude, come on, guy, like. Really, Eritrean troops are not attacking civilians. They're very disciplined soldiers. Here's the problem with this. A few months ago, three, four months ago, whatever, first we're arguing Eritrean troops were not in Tigray. I'm previous to information a lot of people are not. That can't. I see things people can't see. That's okay. That don't make me special, but I know certain things I can't speak on. Eritrean troops, are in Tigray. We all got over that. Everybody accepted that, Mish, because it's there. We see it. Now, this guy, when I try to explain, okay, Beanie Man, for example, patriotic, super Eritrean, loves his country, loves his people, served people in his family, served. I get it. He wants to make Eritrea look good like everybody else. But you're not going to lie about it to defend and validate your patriotism. If Eritrean troops are in Tigray and we know what happens in Sawa and we know there's a shoot to kill policy in Eritrea, if I was going to escape from Eritrea, I'll get shot to die, right? I don't get water. They put you in containers. I, I know the whole deal. What makes you think Eritrean troops will not kill civilians in Tigray? Let me explain something to you. If you go to combat, there's something called collateral damage. As you're going to war, um, against each other, soldier to soldier, people will die. First and foremost, you have to understand this. In the middle, outside, it's no way around it because you're fighting in cities, you're bombing, you know, there's things that, that's just gonna happen. There's no way around it. This tells me this East Africa dude is the East Afro dude, either A, doesn't understand how war works or he's just oblivious, he's a false patriot. And then on top of that, we know Eritrean troops have attacked the Grand civilians. We also know Amhara troops have attacked the Grand civilians. This is war. This is what happens in war. This is the part that you civilians don't get to see. This is the part that you can't handle the truth. It doesn't matter. Iraq, it doesn't matter. There's things that happen that you guys can't handle that is not allowed to be public because you can't handle it. So he's so oblivious to it, it's embarrassing. Only thing I can say is that's embarrassing. Bro, you need to get with the program. That's embarrassing. I'm not trying to shed light on Eritrean troops saying every single one of them is bad, because I don't know every single one of them. I'm just saying the troops is size brought in there initially to now things are going bad and it's not looking good for Eritrean troops. But we also have Eritrean troops. They're, they're saying, hey, I'm not with this. I give up. Don't kill me. Send me wherever. There's those that do that. There's those that really believe in Isaiah. And then there's those that are just forced to fight. Because you got to understand, if I'm a soldier and I'm told to fight Tigray and I say no, and I look behind me, there's some hotter troops with guns behind me telling me you don't go forward, you die. What choice do I have? There's so many variables people have to understand in war. So the next mic will go to Jonas, my brother Jonas. Uh, my question to you, government in exile, government in exile. Okay, I told you, set up a government, Isaias comes down, send a government, right? Have a government in an annex, government in exile, whatever. The government, only one thing though I, I recommend, have a, alternate government, send them forward, have the main government in the diaspora run in that alternate government in Eritrea, 
This way, when the Serapis and Hasotis all try to get together and take the alternate government down, the primary government that is in the diaspora waiting for the alternate government to set up is called the Advan Party, the Advanced Party versus the main body. You get it? This way, you can find out who's trying to do what as you're stabilizing Eritrea. Then when it's all stable, rule of law and all that and economy goes up, then you bring the main body. Go. I'm sorry, everyone. I got to head out, but I, I just wanted to say sorry. I wanted to squeeze in. Happy birthday, Dawid. Love you. Mm -hmm. And nice to meet you, everybody. And um, continue what y'all doing. Thank you, Dolly. Nice meeting you. you. And, uh, about the prayer tomorrow. Take care, my Dolly. I'm going to share, share that as well so, uh, so more people can, you know, get involved. All right, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Nice meeting you, Dolly. Nice meeting you too. Tell Baba, Baba Mahmoud, I said I love you. Okay, well, I have a birthday present. Right. Thank you. Oh, shit, it's your birthday. Oh, crap. Tomorrow's my birthday, but go ahead, Jonas. All right, happy uh, early birthday. And um, and so with that question, with that being said, um, I like how you laid it out. And um, I think the, the main important thing is uh, the logistics is very important, but the main important thing is uh, getting people to support the concept because at the end of the day, we are who we recognize. So the more people that recognize the Constitution, it's going to exist. The more people that recognize this uh, government in exile is going to ex exist. What makes a dictator a dictator is his supporters. Without his supporters, he's just a man. And so the issue is uh, it has to, the majority of the population wants to change. And so they have to act on that change. And then with that, the government can be created. In terms of logistics, uh, I'm going to let them uh, figure it out, but I'll share that information. I like that idea. It makes sense. And at the end of the day, it's going to come down to understanding whoever the government exile is, right? It's not going to be a government exile for five years, 10 years, 20 years. It's for a limited t a time. There's going to be an election uh, held, and it's going to happen uh, properly, responsibly, with security uh, to make sure that the laws are passed and then that things can be created and governed properly. So that way justice can go to everybody. That's the reality of it. And, um, and the one big thing I want to explain is this, when you do see an injustice in another country next to yours, right? You do have to be concerned about that because an injustice anywhere is going to be a threat to justice pretty much everywhere said by Martin Luther King. Right? And so the reality is, that injustice could spread. Look at Hitler, right? And so that's that's a fact. And so if anybody's wondering why we care about our neighbors, it's because we don't want that noise to spread. In fact, it should have been the other way around where they cared about us a little bit more because now it's spread, right? And that's what happened. So injustice anywhere is a threat to justice. You follow what I mean? So I just Absolutely. want to make sure that's clear. And then as far as uh, the government inside logistics and stuff like that, I don't want to get too deep on it on a... Uh, uh, on air and so forth to make it happen. You have to believe in it, operate in it, and then just make it happen from there. Perfect. Thank you, Jonas. I appreciate that. Our uh, brother, uh, Binyam, uh, I got a question for you, brother. Do you Go think, easy on me. <laughs> do you think in the future we can have a good relationship with our Tigrayan brothers? The only reason why I ask you that is because if this continues and we push hate, 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 we're going to be in the same circle as before. Why can't we work together to remove Isaias? Now, Isaias is in, in Tigray. Isaias is in Ethiopia. So when people say we got to solve our own problem, I get it. We got to solve our own problems with Eritreans. The problem is how can you solve your own problem? How can you solve your own problems if Isaias is in Tigray and Ethiopia, right? Ethiopia, Tigray, same thing. So, yes, if he was in Eritrea and we weren't in Ethiopia, I could say, let's solve our own problems. We don't need no one. Now he's killing Tigrayans with Abi Ahmed. Now Tigrayans are part of the situation. Therefore, why can't we just utilize their help collectively, bring him down, and then go our separate ways as neighbors? Go. 
I just want to say this without offending Tagaru or anybody else. If we're going to talk about the government and how the government functions in Eritrea or how the government function in Ethiopia, you have to understand they all had planned to overthrow and hurt each other. Uh, TPLF was uh, arming people that of Eritrean and meeting with Mesfun Hagos and many, many, and, and starting Sagam, you know, inside uh, Tigray, they were trying to overthrow ISIS. In fact, in uh, early 2000, before they signed the ceasefire, Algeria's rule, they walked all the way from Baruntu, Tassane, Sanafe. They were close. They were very close. And that time, believe it or not, David Hawaii, they were not trying to walk backward. They were walking forward. And I, I've seen crucial, like things that gave me nightmare and terror. You know, I get it, that. brother. But moving forward with the youth, our age, what can we do? Can we okay. work together? Like I always said this, and I think it offensive to everybody. And I, I, I don't care about offending people. I care about the people. If you want to move forward, I think all these people that have been in 30 years of war with PTSD, trauma, so much anger and hate, those people have to go. Those people have to be replaced with new blood, with youth, people like you guys, people that are more compassionate and kind, and they put people first. And if you put those people in, which is going to be, I don't want to say it's impossible, it takes time. I always said this, for Eretra to have a future, all these people of 30 years of war, they either have to be retired kindly or put away. And I've met them. I'm telling you, the severity of PTSD and many self-medicating through alcohol and many, many, these guys, life is nothing to them. Life is not worth as much it is worth to you and everybody else. So these people that are members of TPLF and members of the Shabia, because if you look at it, EPLF and TPLF, they're not just an, a T and E apart, but they're almost the same, you know? So all these people that have been in war so many years, 30 years, if these people are still in power and they continue to be the majority ruling the country, you know? These people are always going to have this friction and hate and a lot of wounds that unhealed. You know, they're all constantly cycle of war and hate. And the only way, I think, by miracle, you got to have new blood, young people. So when this young, my brother's YPF DJ that are watching this, they're being lied to. They were told, you guys are the future. You guys are going to lead this country. And so many of them are not in the same way. So many of them are not in the same way. But these guys are cash app. You know, basically, they're Venmo. Their job is to raise money. I have met with them and I have showed them exactly how that wire and money works, that they have no influence. We can go to Asmara or go to Karan or whatever. We have, we're powerless. We can be put down with AK-47. So meanwhile, they have this notion that they're here in the West, that they have some kind of power and they get on social media and they get in something. No, their job is to raise money, their cash out. So uh, to me, till you can show me young Eritrean can have power in the country and have influence, we're going to have this cycle of what do you see? The result is evidence. You know, you're going to see war and you're going to see chaos. You're going to see refugees, whether it's in Tigray, whether they're in Eritrea, because again, the people that were making the decision are the people with severe PTSD, their people was constantly uh, don't know how to sit down and resolve conflict. They're quick to arm people and put them in war. So that's my thing. I, and I, I am a believer that God, there's always miracle, that something like you guys are doing, the prayer thing is great. Maybe we have somebody, I don't know, or we might have our Moses, you know, might show up and take our people and, and take them to the path where Eritreans, Tagaru, everybody deserve a life. Everybody deserve what we have to live and die from a natural cause. No one deserves to die 16, 17 year old and be buried and not their family know who they are. And you responding to these people, I tell you this, that with, I am exhausted. Do not respond to people that our people are worse. Worst enemy is pride. We have pride because of pride. We're willing to say the most ignorant thing. Like the guy that was just telling you, how do you know it is this? Like we're guilty. If we're there and there's a crime being committed in Tigray, we're guilty of it. Just like I said, if I'm driving, and I committed a crime and everybody in the car didn't say nothing, we all go to jail. So these people are not educated. They're talking out of pride and I shy them, you know. You know, you know, 
حماد ما يكون مزارع بكم زي داوي زي غوبرا زولو انتي ابسمون اي بسوبورت وانس ا ويك ليتس هاف ايريشن كورنر اي نو اور برادر يوناس اي نو يو احمد جس سالم اف وي كان هاف جس ايريشن كورنر اند وي كان ادريس اور اون ايشو اي ثينك ذا تاغارو تراست مي ذير فيري ايديوكيتد ذير سمارت بليف ار نوت ذي هاف بيتر يونيفرسيتي ذان اني بادي بيبل ذات دونت انديرستاند مخ ان مغلى ان ان اقسم اول ذيس بلاي Tagaro for the past 20 years, they have done so much economically and they did so much educationally. And I think as, as Eritrean, to be jealous of that, it should be good, not to be involved in war. We should be like, okay, we should do the same thing for our people. And we haven't done that. We are not just involved in all this chaos and things that I'm not proud of. I'm not proud of and nobody should be proud of. And when we see this in Tigray right now, if anybody is proud of, it's sick. Basically need to get help, you know? That's all I can tell you, Howie. صلوات نكبروا لهم لكلهم ميبي اكزابير كم قال غيره اذا كله دابا نحما زلو يتفي حزبنا دما السلام يركب عشنت غنيفو هو 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 سياسه بلا حيت انك عشنت عشنت يو نو اتيك عندي نا هاجر يو نو هاجر يو نو مالت تايم مالت يو تمرتي حكمنا مكبي ماي حزب مهدا ماي كونان يو نو ذاتس اول سوري ثانك يو بس نيكست كويشن از فور سالم Everything that Biniam said, I, I heard it. He's he's kind of elaborating on what's happening, how you should be ashamed of murder and death, focus on, you know, utilizing economy, have healthy jealousy versus, you know, like destructive jealousy. Um, my question to you is, how do you feel when you see Eritreans? Now, right now, he said have an Eritrean corner, right? Everybody on this panel is Eritrean. How do you feel when you see Eritreans with with big big followings, like with Desado, for example. I don't want to mention names, but let's just use him. He's got like a huge following, 30k, 40k, whatever. And they go around dancing with Amharas. They go around dancing with the Dergi flag. And then to make matters worse, you have the Menelik flag of guts on pah, you blow my low. So I'm called, oh, you blew Musu. Not only are you hick deaf, which means you sold Eritrea out. Now you're dancing with Amhara. Now you're dancing. Now you're saying, Eritras Nishet and Namhara. Eritras Nuhubum. Asap Kairi. How does that make you feel internally, regardless of your background as an Eritrean, when you see that Eritrean flag with the Ethiopian flag, the Menelik flag, walking side by side? Does that give you some sort of weird feeling? Because it does me. Yeah, I'm really embarrassed. And it's just crazy that history keeps repeating itself because people refuse to learn the real history. Um, actually, I don't even know if history is repeating itself because this time it's like we're giving our country away. Last time there was resistance, you know, like at least there was no, like the idea of Andanets of confederation was only, uh, I think like one or 2% of Eritrea was the only percentage that was okay with it. But now you would think, that half of us are because um what what our brother Benny, Benny Man was saying it was just like it would be great if all if Eritreans could just mind their business and if we could just focus on Eritrea but half of us have chosen to side with the people oppressing um Tagaru which means that the rest of us have no choice but to represent the other half that cares about humanity because the aftermath that's going to come if we sat down and shut up and didn't show that there was the side of us that do care, the aftermath is going to be crazier. Whether people want to say social media matters or not, they're lying to themselves. Social media does matter. This is a news state. The people, this is how they get their news. So maybe if a few Tagaru are like, okay, at least some of these people understand and they care, then the aftermath won't be as bad. I'm not, because ultimately I see I see the side that Higdef probably has. They're like, why are you helping them when they're probably going to come back and kill us? Well, yeah, y'all y'all did that. <laughs> We're just trying to make it a little bit less painful at the aftermath because it was Higdef that was saying, yeah, kill them all, kill them all, go in there. Didn't acknowledge that we had 100,000 100, uh, plus refugees living just in the Tigray region. And now all of a sudden they're crying, talking about, well, they killed our, they killed our people, they killed our people. Like, no, we're, we're, if anything, trying to show that some of us do care. So for me, it's, 
it's important that we get involved. But I do want to say it. It's 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 very true. What he said my mom talks. There's this older woman in my life. She's like a, like a grandmother to me, but she's not related to me by blood. And she told my mom, she's like, "Oh, you know, you say I sent I get another one. Further, I'm further, I'm away. I'm away. I'm further. I'm ha. I'm hara away. And it's damn near true because Eritreans forgot we have a whole country of people starving. There are pregnant women who haven't eaten in six days because we have no news coming out of Eritrea. We don't. We're, we're just so focused on Tigray and on Ethiopia. And I think it's beautiful that you want to focus more on Eritrea. We do need to do that. But I do think that whatever happens in Tigray is going to ultimately affect us just as much as it affects Tagaru, which is why we have to stay in the loop. We have to we have to do our part. We have to keep speaking on it. But um, I'm embarrassed, you know, just like ultimately if this was a Amhara versus Tigray thing, <laughs> I would have minded my business. I'd be like, okay, Ethiopia, that's going on. But it's my people killing people. And not only that, it's not only like I see the side of like I have a cousin, my mom, I talk to my aunt sometimes and she's basically like what day Allah, he's about 17 and he's scared that he's going to get picked up to go kill somebody. He doesn't want to. There are still those miskin Eritreans who don't want to kill anyone. They're scared out of their minds because they have to go fight. So this is affecting us drastically. I don't see how we could focus on so many other things when our children are being robbed of their lives. These a lot of these boys are the the providers for their families. So the economy has already collapsed over a year of nothing going on. No mukasas. There's no way to get cars to go from one side of the, one part of the country to the other. It's just like I I don't know. Um, I could definitely see what what you mean by we got to focus on our own problems, but Isaias has become everyone's problem. So once we get rid of him. I just feel like that's the key, and I don't know if I answered your question, but the point is I'm embarrassed. I just never thought I would ever see these protests that are happening around the world, like where people are protesting, supporting, no, they're not even protesting, they're supporting a genocide along with the people who oppressed them for 30 plus years. This is none of our business, and it's Isaias' fault that we are even t saying the word Tigray. I've never said the word Tigray in my life like this. Like I don't, I don't know anything about Tigray. I don't, I never cared about it. I'm sorry. I'm. Not, it's just like to me, they were my neighboring country. They're beautiful people. I love them. Like you know, they have Ashenda. I know about that. Other than that, I didn't know anything about Tagaru. So the fact that I have to say anything about them is not my, it's Isaias' fault. He did this on purpose. So first of all, we don't focus on Eritrea, and second, we. We ha he doesn't even want Eritrea to exist. That's like, ultimately, you could tell that either way he split it so people aren't even focused on Eritrea. You're either worried about Amhara or you're worried about Sagarun. And yeah. it's, yeah, it's annoying. Perfect. So I would, I do want to answer someone who wrote something. They said, Dawi, isn't it a double standard? You're dancing with the Tigrayan flag, right? Okay. We did the Salama selfie in Los Angeles, right? For my safety, I wasn't putting out there where I wanted to hang out and all that. They had a party, right? Okay. Me and what the band is set up, we went to this party or hang out, whatever. Uh, there was Tagarus dancing. We joined them with our with our uh, colors or whatever. So, <laughs> so if I go to a wedding, like in San Diego, there's Amharas, there's Tagarus. There's Eritreans, right? The only difference is they're wearing their colors. Every one of you dance at a wedding, Somalians and everyone else. What if they decided to wear all their colors, representing who they are? That's all that happened. You didn't see me be fake and wrap a Tigrayan flag. No, you see me with a melee color and I dance, right? But you know what we call this for those of you that can't get it? Solidarity. Solidarity and unity. I'm letting I'm letting them know, hey, I'm human. I feel for what's happening to your people. As long as you understand my people have been in prison for 30 years. Right? My people have been dying for 30 years. Now this dictator wants to come and kill your people too. So Abi Ahmed could be king of Ethiopia or Esaias or whatever. There's nothing wrong with Eritreans supporting Tigrayans that are experiencing death. But for Eritreans, it's normal. For us, oh, another Eritrean died. 
Abri. Oh, uh, one of them got put in a container. He lost his mind. Oh, once in a container, 150 degrees, renal failure. Tigrayans were living free, right? We had nothing to do with them. I don't even know why we're in this. Soon as Isaias involved us, of course I'm a human. I'm going to have compassion. But you can't tell me not to go to any event with my flag around my neck and go dance and support if it's my Salama selfie. I need you to understand that, Victory, whoever wrote that. It doesn't matter. Anyways. Can I say something, too? Go ahead. Sorry, I was, I was going to say, I think the reason for the the protest has a lot to do with why I would care. Like, if you're going to, a, if there was, a, um, like, you know, people say there's an Amhara genocide, right? Then if you go to a anti-Amhara genocide, not a pro-TPA, not a pro-Tigray genocide, an anti-Amhara genocide, and Eritreans want to go to that, and there happen to be flags, and they choose the flags that don't identify, that we don't necessarily want to represent, because... The flags that we claim are the Derg flag. A lot of Amhara were mad about that. I'm not saying it does not, and I do understand that Derg played the Amhara just as bad as the rest of the country. So, like, I know, but there's uh, there's flags that even other tribes of Ethiopia don't want to represent, don't want to don't want to hold, and that's what I'm talking about when we say that flag with the three colors that are just there's no symbol or anything. Most most people like Tagaru don't identify with that flag. Oromo people don't identify with any Ethiopian flag. Most of them, but still, like. Ultimately, that's what I mean. But if you're going to go to, I don't see how we can get in the same, how they can claim that's the same argument as us going to an anti-genocide protest. Like, if I'm going to a, and there happen to be Tigrayan flags, how is that the same as you going to a pro-Tigrayan genocide protest? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the reasoning behind it has a lot more to do with why we're upset that you're dancing with them. Because ultimately, I do think that if there's a genocide, we should put, pol we should put politics aside, just like we did with Sudan. Everybody, no one knows Sudanese stuff on the inside, but we all turned blue for Sudan a couple of years ago. Like, all of our profile, you know? No one asks any questions because we don't have a political, we don't have any political affiliation with them, so we just didn't care. Same thing with Palestine. People speak on it without caring about the, the the what's going on on the inside because they just understand the humanity. Same when Rwanda was happening. People were sad about with the the Hutu and the Tutsis. But for some reason, when it comes to our neighbors, because we had issues with them, we're not supposed to feel bad for you. That's bull. I do think that it's okay if you were to go to an anti-Amhara genocide, if that's what you're going to and they happen to have their flags, then go ahead. Like... But if you're going to a pro pro genocide march, that's just like and don't and you're holding my flag, like that's disgusting. That's what I'm saying. I just think that's people need to make that um, differentiate. Like they need to differentiate that, in my opinion. You make that a good we, point. About I want to say quickly about the music. Um, I have a guest. I apologize. I joined you. I left my guest downstairs. But you said something important. You know, you said something about when you dance and people criticize you. In fact, believe it or not, that day, there was a big gathering. It was the day my brother passed away and there was a gathering in my house and believe it, a former general was here from the Higdev. And he looked at me and he said, how, how, how am I related to you? And he asked me, he said, is that what to write what you know? You know? And I said, I don't know. So he, he looked at it and he showed me stuff dancing. So let me tell you something, all these Higdev, when I was playing music, by mistake, if I put a Maharic beat in, in between Tigrinya, they would jump on stage and they want to me. That's the double. Like, yeah. it's straight to my face. Like, everybody is listening. Kulum, Shabia. Like, they would have, a, they would have it up to here. Like, Ntai, I'm having it. They would go crazy. <laughs> you know? Like, they're the biggest hypocrite. Don't listen to, they're going with the wind. Those followers are, they go with the wind that we, uh, there's nothing that they say to you to take it. Extend. You can just brush them. They're haters. There's nothing that, like, listen, Teddy Afro, the biggest successful Amharina singer, when we played reggae, he joined us back in the days, and he's making the biggest money. And he realized that, like, at that time, a rich musician would like, no, but my little out is your mom, is for to, you know? They were like different mindset, you know, lack of education and in addition, also exposure. The main war between Tigray right now and Eritrea getting in there, people need to put it through clear. I will tell you guys straight from what I know. It's an economical war. Eritrea failed big time economically. And I think Jonas is a business dude. He can clearly go into this more than me. Eritrea failed economically. 
and was lured to this war by false promises by Dr. Abai between a closed door of Isaias and Abai signing documentation to make promises to the Eritrean people because the Eritrean people saw it as like, they fail economically when it says, and you guys can go to YouTube if you think I'm lying. It says clearly told, I said, all these failure is just, they won't go nowhere. And the Eritrean people saw it as Tigray has in charge of Ethiopia made Eritrea a failure economically. Mm -hmm. And the only promises Abai made to Isaias behind closed doors, if you sign this, I'll give you the moon, basically energy, access economically, trade, and also using the port to import and export, you know? So I don't want to go in detail because I know I'm going to get a call from yeah. some of the people and I have the guys say, why is spilling beans? But you guys know better than I. So understand that all those followers are just following on passion, anger, resentment, self-hate. They're joining this and they're saying things that, that to you, Dawit, or anybody that's brave enough. And, you know, I applaud you, you know, for anybody, Salim, all you guys for doing what you're doing. Continue to do what you do. What you're doing, it means a lot because our people don't have the voice you guys do. And I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of phone calls today just for saying a few things. <laughs> but understand, this is, a, this is economical war. This is economical war. And America right now is trying to fix it between Isaias and Abai by putting them behind closed doors and showing them that the economical decision and the signature, all these HICDEF members that don't know about it, that we, that's why I wanted to tell you. Challenge them, challenge them. Any Shabi or any Hikdaf come to you, show show me the receipt. What do they know? You and I know more detail what's in that paper and what Isaiah signed and what Abai signed than any of them. They don't even question. They don't even go to their meeting and say, what did we sign? What was the agreement? Because why are we out there killing Tagaru? Just using the people for their hate, but behind closed doors is this. Now Abai and Isaiah are told that this situation with Egypt and Sudan is going to escalate. So if you guys don't make peace here, it's going to go cross and it's going to, any decision that you sign in this economical growth is only going to be worse for you. So the best thing to do is fix what you have inside. So there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel for Tagaru and everybody that's watching this because understand the economical sector is going to be, there is a lot of pressure to fix it. And it, Biden right now, for a lot of you guys that voted for Biden, I appreciate you. I was a big voice out there doing what I need to do as a person, as, as a U.S. citizen that need to empower people to vote because a lot of Shabia wanted to vote for Trump because they felt that Trump will give it them. He will continue to give them weapon and it will be more war. And I want to say a lot of things because that is still in the military. So uh, love you guys. I'm going to go run downstairs and run with my sheep and cows and whatever that all that I have downstairs and play with the kids. Have a beautiful day. Let's do this. Next time, don't call me out in the middle of freeway to come like right now and join you. I want to be know. prepared. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. The best way to invite you guys is raw and unprepared so we get the truth. No. Why? Not that was, that was, uh, come on, man. <laughs> so uh, let's let's do it. Let's do once a week Eritrean Corner or something. And no disrespect to Tagaru or Amharu or anybody of listeners. We Eritrean understand that we have issues at home. And if we don't solve our issues ourselves at home, mm -hmm. it just continues to spread and it affect people. And my heart goes to anybody that's like right now that's suffering from this war because, you know, the decision that made in the leadership that is impacting Tagaru or any innocent people, you know, we, we stand for people. We don't stand for entity or hate group, you know? And that's why I respect you, brother, and I respect all of you guys. And I'm gonna go drink some chai and hambasha. You guys continue to do what you do. I love each one of you guys. Jonas, uh, I have a single cousin if you're still single. Uh, that way you're not single. Salim, I have a cousin, you know, I'm trying to. <laughs> anyway, take care. I love you. Please, please do this once a week. But yeah, that way, do this once a week because there's a lot of Eritreans that are calling me. I tell you in front of everybody, they're saying, and tell you that we to the Alamana took and the Eritrean Mariho Rio. They listen to you, bro. They listen to you big time. And I told them Dawit has a big libby. He's he's now he's he's jumping in some mud, you know. I don't want to say mud, I don't want to, you know who I'm talking about. They're pushing him on all this nonsense. He needs to focus and you know, just get people together. The goal is for us to unite because as long as we're going against each other, it's us is winning, believe it or not. As long as we divided. That's why I still haven't given up in the heck death. I haven't given up in all of them because they're family. They're your family, my family. We can get them slowly, slowly. A lot of them are not happy what's going on. So let's work together. Love you.
Thank you. Love you, brother. Thank you. Okay, it's three of us now. He thinks he knows us all. Michigan's like, Dawid, you're you're married with 50 kids. Jonas, you're single. <laughs> Salem, you got 10 kids. <laughs> yeah, <he's Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, that's cool. So check it out. Um, Jonas, I'll give you uh, the last word, brother. Go ahead and tell us uh, what you think about everything Biniam said as far as Eritreans can solve their own problem. You actually believe that as far as oh, now, no. before, before you comment on that, understand yeah. one thing before you comment on that. Just remember, it's science is in Ethiopia. Go ahead. Yeah. So the concept of thinking that Eritrean can solve their own problems, the reason why it's flawed is because their core problem is, uh, is justice, the lack of justice, right? And so at the same time in Ethiopia, their core problem is justice, the lack of justice. So the reality is they, uh, they need each other to solve their problems because they're all interconnected. You can't have justice in one country and have injustice in another country. The evidence of that is the injustice that was going on in Eritrea bled over to Ethiopia. That's the reality of it. That's a fact. And so at the end of the day, if everybody focuses on justice, then things can move forward properly. And then the question is, what's justice? Justice is a constitution. Justice is believing in it, uh, living it. Even though it's not ratified, this and that, operating that way will. Like I said, the only reason why a dictator is a dictator is because he has supporters. It doesn't mean he has 100% support. No, he has probably maybe even 20% support. It's not 50%. It's not 51%. It's not half. The reality is, is look at all the, uh, the refugees. Do you see an influx of people going to Eritrea or people going out? Going out. The answer is people going out. So, yeah, so the reality is, is the, the evidence is the reality. That's the best way I can put it with this situation. And then uh, the part about having an Eritrean corner, that's fine because uh, that, that, we can all communicate with one another. But in terms of people who are, what do you call them, a white PF DJ or something like that, the, 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 all they have to do is look at the flaws. Look at the facts and look at the flaws. They don't have to look too far. And then the minute they can't understand, then they know they're in the wrong position. If anyone's telling you to change the narrative, well, why not, how come they're not telling you just to tell the truth? Doesn't that make more sense rather than changing the narrative? If you stick to the truth, everything will be all right. And so, um, so I'm hoping that uh, people just focus on the truth and so forth and focus on the justice right, and then everything else will fall in place. And then what we can do what we should be doing. I'm asking. All right, seems like we lost Jonas. Um, I see him. He's having internet difficulties. I'm going to come back. Okay. Okay. Um, anyways, we're about to close out. Me and uh, Salem, um, that was a good discussion. Yeah. We're seven minutes shy of two hours. Oh. I think that's good enough. Mm, a lot of people made a lot of good comments. A lot of YouTubers um, are on here discussing and, and saying a lot of things, which is cool. And Yahuateka, Kurudakuma Law, this is necessary. You have to come here and discuss this. If we don't discuss this, um, these topics of hurt, we're never going to move forward. With that being said, let me bring Jonas back in. All right, Jonas. Uh, I was covering you, brother. Go ahead and give us one last closing statement. We're going to shut yeah. it down in six minutes. Okay. okay, so one last closing statement is this. The, the reason why it's important to help people, the Tigrayans, uh, to get to advocate for a ceasefire, to advocate for third-party uh, investigation and so forth, the people of Tigray, they see that. And what you want is you want the people, the powers in the people. Therefore, you want the people to get along because the governments are going to go. 
because the power of the people, once the people get along, they can elect new uh, leadership. They can advocate for new leadership and so forth. That can happen. But what you want is you want people to see people advocating for one another. Therefore, the sentiment of revenge does not exist. You will get a few people that uh, once go to revenge and so forth, then you bring them to justice. But the reality is you want people helping people. And it was, so what you guys are doing, what Team Freedom is doing, what we're all doing in our, in our all uh, organization and so forth, all the activism, uh, we, we all are all going to mutually benefit from that. So that's going to end it with that. Thank you. We love you, Jonas. Yeah. Uh, good luck in DC. Yaakul, you are doing a great job. Handle your business. Yep. We'll be in touch soon for the next live on the Eritrean corner, and then we'll have a Tigrayan corner as well. I'm bringing all my Tigrayan friends to speak on how they feel too. We got to be fair, family. Yep. So with that said, we'll catch you on the flip. I salute you, bro. All right. Thank you, brother. All right, Salem, one last statement, Hafte. I know you've been quiet because there's too many people. With. No, I loved it. I love being able to hear everyone's perspective. Um, no, I think this was a great show. Thank you. I'm going to need more time before next time, but okay. Um, and yeah, other than that, I just want to see everyone tomorrow at the Prayer for Peace. Okay, <laughs> that's really Where is it going to be at? Oakland? Uh, there's one in Oakland at Lake Merritt. And, what uh, time? It's at two o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So, and then if you're not here, obviously it's going to be broadcasted worldwide um, on like Asena and I don't remember the other broadcasters, but um, yeah, that's pretty much the main thing that I'm concerned about is people coming out because not concerned about numbers. I just genuinely believe in collective prayer. I feel like the more people come out, like the more power there will be in it. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. I would love to see more people come out, especially the youth and or emerging leaders. And other than that, um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. Thank I you. Really enjoyed this. No, thank you, sister. We had a great show. This is the type of discussions we need to be having. Um, I appreciate everyone coming here. We got to get past this name calling and all that. This is an educated corner. Like, if you come here, Let's have fruitful conversations. Don't come here attacking people, insulting people. I could have shut everybody down, kicked them out, but I need I need the people to hear what's happening and what people are saying, to, you know, at each other, against each other. Like, as long as we keep calling each other names and we can't move forward, you guys are all living a good life. Our brothers and sisters are all dying in the horn right now. Tigrayans, Eritreans, all dying. What good is arguing and going back and forth? They don't solve our problems. If you're head deaf, I know your stance, and I'm trying to cure you from your issue, please. So let's work together. Like I'm trying to educate you. Coming over here and disrespecting Guadalajara and all this and that, that serves no purpose. What you could do is reach out to her and be like, hey sis, how do you feel about this? Hey sis, is there a way we can move forward? Hey sis, what if we collectively remove the science? Hey sis, what if we remove Abby? What can we do? How can we talk to congressional members? That's what this corner is about. Name calling is easy. You want to call someone names? Call them on their phone. Call them names. Take Do that on your own time. Here, we're trying to be leaders. I'm trying to show you what the youth is speaking about. I'm trying to show you the ideology and, and the intellect that the youth possesses and how they can move the country forward. That old ideology of... We're in it, we're in it. I'm tired of hearing about we in it. I am sick and tired of hearing about we in it. You know why I'm tired about hearing about we in it? What change does that bring? We in it did this 30 years ago. Okay, what about we in it? When we in it was in charge of Tigray, it kind of in Ethiopia, the entire Ethiopia, boom, beyond unmatchable to the point where the world was seeing Ethiopia as a second world instead of the third world. Nobody discusses this. So if you're going to speak facts, Come over here and speak facts. If you're going to talk about hate, we don't have time for that. We're only talking historical data and facts. When you say Eritrea fought Ethiopia, then say Ethiopia. Don't say Wayene, because you know why? The whole Ethiopia was under TPLF. So quit trying to separate Tigray. That's the main issue we have now. You So if that's the case, you should say Eritrea fought Tigray. Don't say Eritrea fought Ethiopia then. If you're gonna talk factual, if you're gonna talk factual, say Eritrea fought Ethiopia, the entire Ethiopia. 
at the time was under the leadership of TPLF. TPLF. That's it. Let's let's stop lying to each other and just speak facts and truth. But you hating me and me hating you and you telling Guadalajara she's not welcome here. She's entitled to her opinion, just like you're entitled to your opinion. And that's okay. We can have differences. This is what makes us human. This is what makes us humanity. For me to care for a child that's getting killed, losing his arms and legs and all that, makes me human. When Tigrayans die, I cry because I'm human. I'm supposed to cry when a child dies. I'm supposed to cry when a mom dies. That's what makes me human. When Eritreans die, I'm sure there's Tigrayans who feel some type of way and cry too. I'm sure there's Amharas crying right now of what's happening to Tigrayans. Not everybody's bad like you guys think. You guys have turned this tribalism into straight hate. And that's what the youth is trying to remove from your hearts. We're trying to educate you. And I need you to come on the show and receive this communication. Stop fighting the communication. You're spending more time arguing with each other instead of receiving what the panel is discussing, right? You should listen to what your children are saying so you can learn on how we're going to move forward. Instead of, if I sat there typing, arguing, 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 trying to make this a hug deaf site, this is not a hug deaf site. She's right. This is the cure for hig dev. <laughs> this show is the cure for hig dev. My issue isn't Tigrayans. My issue isn't Wayene. My issue, me, Captain, and Salem is hig dev. So my show is to teach and cure hig dev. If I had a problem with Tigrayans and Wayene, I'd be in Tigray fighting them. They're not my problem. My problem is the hig defawi. That's my problem. My problem is the ones that want to separate the nine Bihars in Eritrea. You talk about fixing Eritrea. Well, how do you fix Eritrea? Stop screaming Wayana for the last 30 years and start fixing Eritrea. You're going to blame Wayana for everything? Uh, oh, Sawa, Wayana's fault. Eritrea has no water, Wayana's fault. Eritrea lost the port, Wayana's fault. Well, Eritrea lost Asem because the dictator is size of Forki. Gave it to Abi Ahmed. Why don't you say that? Stop saying when it did. When, it's getting old, guys. Like, when do we move forward and start speaking the truth? The Horn of Africa's port, when it did it. Okay. When it took their licks, when it did what they did, we know about Badame. I get it. I understand the history. Who's in charge of Eritrea now? Isaias. Who's in charge of Ethiopia now? Abi Ahmed, unelected. Let's speak about that. But you're forgetting what's happening to Tigrayans and Eritreans because you're so stuck on when it, when it, when it. You sound like Aragai Hagos, when it, when it, when it. Like it gets old. I don't want to hear none of that. What I want to hear is problem, Solution. combat and war, innocent people dying. Solution, Get rid of the common denominator is size and Abi. Yeah. And how do you solve the problem? You remove hig deficits and Abi. Done. After that, we can sort our issues out with the grinds and everybody else. That's simple. Humanity, people. Education, humanity. We love you. Salam and I will be back. Team Freedom. I love all of you. Welcome to the show and good night. I hope everybody has a blessed uh, night. And I also want to let you know tomorrow for my birthday, I'll probably be hosting some stuff. Salam on selfies and uh, uh, prayer, prayer rallies. That is what I want to do for my birthday, because I want to bless the people of Eritrea and the people of Tigray that are experiencing death with that. Go ahead, Salem. Um, well, I, I wanted to add, are you talking about in regard to this, or can I add something about what you're you can saying? add whatever you want, and then tell them you love them. Okay, I was, uh, was going to say, just this whole sentiment about, like, um, well, you know, back when we were fighting in 2001 and they didn't stand for us and this and that, I hate that. Like, Air Trans really need to get rid of that whole, like, well, if they wouldn't do this for me, then I shouldn't do it for them. That's not how God, love, peace, unity, anything good in life doesn't work when you're 
giving to receive. That's not how it works. So even if this ends up work like working out against me, I'm still gonna feel good about anything I did during this time to try to alleviate anyone's pain because that's just how it is. And so right now it's just like what you said with the tribalism turning into hate. White people started this a long time ago. They wanted this to go on forever and it is because we refuse to see each other as humans. We're literally neighbors. Like we literally, and then in this case, we speak the exact same language. We look like dead on each other. So um, yeah, I just, I hope that people, I'm really just saying this as a way, like in case anyone's considering coming tomorrow and isn't really sure if you're from any tribe, like from any country, doesn't even have to be Eritrean or Tigrayan, like please come to a prayer for peace event. Cause just like, give just give love there it's it's an abundance don't worry it's not gonna run out like you're not gonna lose weight or you're not gonna like you know faint if you give it out just come pray you know and other than that i just want to say thank you so much i really appreciate all the nice comments i was getting um and i'm getting more comfortable like with lives and stuff this was really hard before but thank you so much to everybody who listens to me rant so <laughs> thank you that's all right Thank you, Hapte. Mesfun uh, Gide, I will try, brother. I'm new to this YouTube stuff, but we're working at me and Sal. I'm going to try to build my page and then work her page. We got, we're trying to work it on. Um. I love you. Brukhleti. Dek Eritrea. Dek Tigray. Dek Ethiopia. Dek America. Kula. Amlach Yamazgunokum. Brukhleti. Captain Eritrea signing out. Ciao.